भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्राएश भद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिखी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय 
देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम हरे कृष्ण वी रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर थर्टीन एंटाइटल्ड द पियंस ऑफ लॉर्ड वराह टेक्स्ट इलेवन सत्व अस्याम अपत्या सदृशात्मनो गुण उत्पाद्य शास धर्मेन गाम्यज्ञम यज सत्व अस्याम पत्या सदृशात्मनो गुण उत्पादशास धर्मेन गाम्यज्ञम यज सत्व अस्याम पत्या सदृशात्मनो गुण उत्पाद्य उत्पादशास धर्मेन गाम्यज्ञम यज सदृशात्मनो गुण उत्पादशास धर्मेन सत्वस्याम पत्या सदृशात्मनो गुण उत्पादशास धर्मेन पुषम यज सत्व सदृशात्मनो गुण उत्पादशास धर्मेन गाम्यज्ञम यज एनी ट्यून इज ओके सत्व अस्याम पत्या अस्याम इन हर अपत्या चिल्ड्रन सदृशा इक्वली क्वालिफाइड आत्मन of yourself gunaihi with the characteristics utpadya having begotten shasa rule dharmena on the principles of devotional service gam the world yagnyaihi by sacrifices purusham the supreme personality of godhead yaja worship translation Since you are my very obedient son I ask you to beget children qualified like yourself in the womb in the womb of your wife rule the world in pursuance of the principles of devotional service unto the supreme personality of godhead and thus worship the lord by performances of yagna can you go up in the translation okay 
purport by Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada ki. The purpose of material creation by Brahma is clearly described herein. Every human being should beget nice children in the womb of his wife as a sacrifice for the purpose of worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service. In the Vishnu Purana 3.8.9 it is stated Varnashrama Charavata Purushena Parapuman Vishnu Aradhyate Pantha Nanyatatto Shakaranam One can worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu by proper discharge of the principles of Varna and Ashrama. There is no alternative to pacifying the Lord by execution. There is no alternative to pacifying the Lord by execution of principles of the Varnashrama system. Vishnu worship is ultimate aim of human life. Those who take the license of married life for sense enjoyment must also take the responsibility to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu. And the first stepping stone is the Varnashrama Dharma system. Varnashrama Dharma is a systematic institution for advancing in worship of Vishnu. However, if one directly engages in the process of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it may not be necessary to undergo the disciplinary system of Varnashrama Dharma. The other sons of Brahma, the Kumaras, directly engaged in devotional service and thus they had no need to execute the principles of Varnashrama Dharma. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Unvaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Panijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Paschat Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prem Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratvishe Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kantha Radha Kantha Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Pri Manchakalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namon Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sattva Masyama Patyani Sadrishani Atmanogunaihi Utpadya Shasta Dharmena Gamya Gnei Purusham Veja Since you are my very obedient son, I ask you to beget children qualified like yourself in the womb of your wife. Rule the world in persons of the principles of devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus worship the Lord by performances of Yajna. Hare Krishna. Uh, we welcome all of you to Srimad Bhagavatam class, especially on Monday morning. Usually it's very difficult to attend on Monday morning. At least if you attend to stay awake. Therefore it's a big challenge to speak on Monday mornings. But I seek the blessings of all the devotees assembled. Uh, so that we can discuss something worthwhile and something which is applicable to our life. Actually here we see Brahma is uh, Brahma and Swambhuv Manu, they are having conversation. And Swambhuv Manu, like an obedient son, as spoken in other uh, previous verses, he, he tells Brahma, please order me what you want me to do. So Brahma becomes very pleased and therefore he orders Brahma, he is ordering now. Since you are my very obedient son, I ask you to beget children qualified like yourself in the womb of your wife. So first of all, it is very important to understand how human li life is a life of responsibility as compared to the animal, animal species. Now, nowadays we are going in the park to chant Hare Krishna in the morning. So there we see so many people coming with dogs. Over there, Actually, dogs, just uh, we were discussing in other classes also, 
Sometimes we see in the parks when a he dog sees a she dog, immediately it goes and pounds on, you know, jumps on the she dog. Whereas, and the owners just, you know, try to separate them and etc. But suppose a man and a woman, you know, a woman is walking on the road, a man also tries going behind her, immediately is put behind bars. So therefore, one thing is for sure that humans don't live a life like animals, right? Even the materialists know it. Like in uh, India, I saw that, uh, you know, these telawalas who have vegetables on the cart in the street, they're selling. So sometimes a bull, he goes to the, car, uh, he goes to the cart and he starts chewing on cabbage, right? So the person in charge, he takes a stick and whacks the bull. So immediately the bull feels, you know, this is not an appropriate place for me. So he goes away. But later again he sees the cabbage and again comes to eat the cabbage. Right? But whereas for us, suppose we are invited to a dinner, we won't start eating unless we have been given some permission. We won't just jump on the food like animals. Therefore human life is a life of culture, it is a life of character, it is a life of responsibility. Hmm? So you see here in Purpose Shri Prabhupada is saying, every human being should beget nice children in the womb of his wife as a sacrifice for the purpose of worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotional service. That means, yes, if it's, in, if, if it's uh, done so in the mood of a sacrifice for the purpose of pleasing Krishna, then it's not wrong to have wife and get married, I mean get married and have wife and beget children. Then it's not wrong. Well, for the purpose of sense uh, enjoyment, it is not allowed. Hmm. So, you see, in, even in the case of Priyavrata, King Priyavrata was uh, Uttanapada's brother. So, when Uttanapada, he took, uh, he was delivered, Dhruva, he ruled for many, many thousands and thousands of years, and he finally uh, got, was delivered, and like that, the whole lineage of Dhruva, Uttanapada gets delivered. So now, there is a situation in the entire world that there is no one to rule the planet. So then what happens then? Priyavrata, who was the brother of King Uttanapada, he was actually, he had taken sannyas, not sannyas, but he had gone to the forest to practice meditation. Right? He had to practice, uh, he wanted to perfect his spiritual life without getting entangled in this material world. So then what happened? Our uh, Narad Muni was uh, his shiksha guru. He was teaching him how to lead a life of Brahmacharya. But then Brahma descended because there was no one. Of course, before Brahma, uh, Swambhuv Manu descended. So when Swambhuv Manu, he came down to tell Priyavrata that you please take the ownership of ruling, the responsibility of ruling this world because the world has no king. And you sitting in the forest is secondary to ruling the world because ruling the world, everyone has to be cultivate in, uh, in spiritual life. Therefore, someone is required and Priyavrata was asked to do so. Now, when Priyavrata was asked to do so, initially he said, no, because I am a Brahmachari. I want to practice Brahmachari Ashram. I want to practice this life of tapasya and perfect my life and go back to Godhead. But Swambhu Manu said, no, this is not possible. Someone is required to rule. If you don't rule, who will rule the world? So therefore, there was no conclusion of that discussion. Then Brahma descended. Higher, highest authority here. So now when Brahma descended, Brahma also said, it's best that if you get married. So say, now we, some of us practice Brahmachari, are in Brahmachari ashram. Now if our spiritual master comes to us and tell us, you know, for the need of service, it's best if you get married. For the need of service, can we actually get married? Or are we attached to our Brahmacharya? Isn't it? So the highest principle is, again, renunciation for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. So that, that is the main principle. See here, in the purport, of course, uh, so the Priyavrata, then Priyavrata does obey the uh, instructions of Brahma. And because Brahma is such an exalted personality, when Narada Muni, everyone, you know, Narada Muni gives sanction for Priyavrata to get married. And Priyavrata gets married, he rules the world and gets entangled into sex life. Of course. And then, because he, but he obeyed Brahma and then he got married. Therefore, towards the end of his life, he got remembrance of Krishna and he dedicated the, towards the end, he became completely dedicated to his spiritual life. So, in the purport, Sri Prabhupada is saying that um, those who take the license of married life 
for sense enjoyment must also take the responsibility to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. See, what does license mean? License, for example, driving license. Now initially, we are, without driving license, you cannot drive. But suppose you are given the license. Now is it, just because we have license, can we drive however we want? Can we drive wherever we want? Can we create a chaos in the city? That's not allowed. License means it's allowed to drive, but you're still supposed to follow the laws of the government, right? So then it's, uh, the, then you're actually, give that, that license you have been given, that leniency to drive, but according to the laws of the government, laws of the traffic. Hmm? So similarly in marriage life, yes, if someone wants to get married, he's allowed to get married. Because in our Varnashrama system, in the ashramas, we have Brahmacharya, 0.25, then till 50 is Grastha, then Vanam Gatoyad. Go to one, that is Vanaprastha, and then Sanyas, last stage. So yes, it's allowed. But if you see, the license to enter Grastha Ashrama is given if for a person who, who has the need to get married, to experience. Some people from... Uh, previous lives we have got enough ex kicks from Maya. So we don't need to enter Grihastha Ashrama. Mm. So some people from childhood they say many Indians when I meet they say actually when, when I was small I was thinking I should take sannyas. I have seen I have met many who come to the temple because it's very natural. Many of us have got kicks from before. Isn't it? And therefore they want to take sannyas. No problem. But for those uh, who <coughs> who are, uh, who need the kicks to grow in life. For example, the sons of Daksha, uh, what's the name? Hariyashwas? Yeah. So Hariyashwas, actually this was Daksha's argument when he saw his, uh, how many? 10,000 sons initially. 10,000? Hariyashwas? So Hariyashwas when, one was 10,000 and another was 1,000. Later he reduced. <laughs> So, Hariyash was, initially when Narad Muni influenced Hariyash was and told them, why are you simply wasting your life to do tapasya, to attract Vishnu's mercy, to pro procreate. Rather, you go back to Godhead. Immediately, it clicked to them because they were already brahmachari material. They had got enough kicks in the past life. Now, Daksha's argument to Narada was, what you have done is a great injustice to, the, to my sons. Why? Because they haven't experienced the material world. They, so their, their renunciation is very immature. What is the problem with immature renunciation? You fall back into material life. And sometimes when they fall back, they fall back deeper. You know, whatever number of years they had, you know, practiced renunciation. So now when they come back, they do it with full force to compensate for those years. Sometimes we see in our movement also. So therefore, Daksha didn't like this. And actually, uh, his argument is correct that to practice brahmacharya or celibacy or enter renounced order immaturely is very dangerous. It's not good. Because sometimes it can lead to, you know, extra, um, you know, illicit affairs. Because the brahmacharya is not brahmacharya material. And he tries to practice brahmacharya artificially, then it leads to sometimes illicit affairs, so many uh, wrong connections. So therefore for him to get married is dharma, right? Now for someone who can practice celibacy and who can go and preach, take to the renounced order and preach and spread the message of Krishna, Guru and Krishna, for such a person, the highest dharma would be for him to completely dedicate his time and energy in brahmacharya, right? So for him that is dharma. So therefore though the, uh, Daksha's argument holds, for Hariyashwas, it doesn't hold. Because Hariyashwas are already mature. How much did Narada influence them? He just said, you know, you are doing so much, why don't you do it for Krishna? That's all. <laughs> so it clicked and they became, they took to renounced order. So, uh, coming back to license, Prabhupada is using the word license to give us a hint that in when we get license to get married, it doesn't mean we are free to do anything. Free to do anything means griha medhi. That is the word used, griha medhi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, griha medhi means they are not following the shastric uh, rules and regulations. 
So uh, license also means a regulation. Yes, one is one wants to experience the material world, so he is given a part of his life. How much? 25 to 50, 25 years. Not whole life, not how much ever he wants, not however he wants, everything is restricted. That is license. It's restricted. It's under control. Therefore, Prabhupada says, in, uh, in the purport, he says, those who take the license of married life for sense enjoyment must t also take the responsibility to satisfy Supreme Personality of God. It's not independent. Whereas on the contrary, we see today, unfortunately, sometimes they think, you know, sometimes we, I've seen some devotees, youths, when they want to, when they're growing, when they're being cultivated in Krishna consciousness, they say, uh, sometimes they are not very sense controlled. And when we tell them about being sense controlled, about, you know, not to eat so much, not to overeat, not to oversleep, sometimes the answer we, response we get is, Prabhu, anyway I'm grihastha. Anyway I'm going to get, get into grihastha ashram. Well, that's not grihastha ashram. That's griha medhi. Isn't it? So therefore, renounced order in a broad sense is meant for all the four. Brahmachari, grihastha, vanprastha and sannyas. All of them are supposed to be dedicated to the service of Guru and Krishna. And we, we see that in so many pastimes, actually they, one can be a brahmachari in the temple, in the ashrama, and he can be contemplating on sense objects. Whereas another person can be a grihastha, and he can be completely dedicated to service of Guru. For example, there was this uh, great disciple of Sripad Ramanacharya. His name was Danurdas. And Ramanacharya would spend a lot of time, invest a lot of time in Danudas and his wife. So all the Brahman, all the sannyasis in the ashrama, they thought, why is Ramanacharya favoring a grihastha? We are sannyasis, and he hardly spends any time with us. So then uh, Ramanacharya understood this, uh, you know, negative vibes, as they say, that, that was going on in the ashram. So he wanted to prove to them who was Danudas. I want to show it to them. So one day what happened? He uh, told the sannyasi disciples, why don't you go to the home of the Nurdas at night? Actually, I just realized, Ramachar is part of speaking. He said, I just realized, actually the Nurdas is very attached to his wife. He's very attached to his home and he's very attached to the property. Hmm? So therefore, I want to expose him. So he told his sannyasi disciples, why don't you go to the home of the Nurdas and at night, pick the jewelry from the body of his wife and bring it back. And next day, he will come crying that he has lost prop his property and his uh, valuable jewels and he'll start and he'll be exposed that he is completely attached. So, Nassis were very thrilled. They wanted to do this. So, the very next night, they went and as uh, the wife of Danudas was sleeping inside the home, so she was sleeping on uh, one direction, like on the side. So they could get the ornaments from the right part of the body. And she got to know that someone's, you know, picking the jewelry. But she could understand these are the sannyas disciples of Ramanacharya. So she thought probably they are in need for some jewelry. Something is wrong in the ashram, you know, they want some funds or something. So then she uh, thought, okay, let me turn over to the other side so that they can pick my other side of jewelry also. But as she tried to turn, the, yeah, the sannyas disciples, they got scared that, you know, probably they'll get caught. So immediately they ran away. And uh, she w got up and she went to her husband, probably who was working, he wasn't asleep. They, she went and told him that actually these, uh, your god brothers had come to, come to me and they took one uh, side of jewelry, but I, I wasn't able to give them the other part of the jewelry. So immediately Danudas was shocked. He chastised so heavily uh, his wife because he said, you are so attached to your jewelry that you cannot even give it for the service of Guru. How abominable. And he left the home. Left the home means he got out. So then, uh, when the sannyas disciples came back, then they uh, actually narrated to Ramanacharya that just, uh, they actually, they saw it, that how Danurdas was very disappointed that actually his wife couldn't give all the jewelry to uh, for the service. So uh, Danurdas was feeling very bad. Mm. So they also observed and on the, other, on the same day morning what Ramacharya had done 
was the previous night he had taken the cowpins of all the sannyasis and he had uh, exchanged them and some were, some went missing also he took some of the cowpins and the same day morning what the next day morning what had happened all the sannyasis were fighting with one another for their cowpins they were thinking hey you took my cowpin no you took my cowpin so they were fighting like kids therefore then uh, Ramacharya after you know the sannyasis got some half of the jewelry and the sanya sannyasis themselves observed the renunciation of uh, Danurdas then they narrated the whole thing to Ramacharya and then Ramacharya pointed out just see the difference between Danurdas and all of you for you all of you are fighting over cowpins whereas Danurdas is ready to give all his property to for the service of Guru so therefore renounced order is not restricted to brahmacharis or the sannyasis or the vanprastas. Anyone can be in the renounced order. Because renounced order means dedicating our time, dedicating our energy and efforts for the mission of the guru. That is renounced order. So you see, uh, of course there was uh, one of my teacher's lecture title. Grihastha mentality in Brahmachari Ashram. <laughs> that was the title. So many Brahmacharis attended that lecture. Because we are, many of us have Grihastha mentality. Grihastha mentality as in not the proper Grihastha, Grihastha Ashram, but the Grihamedi mentality. So one thing we can understand is Grihasthas can be more fixed up even than the Brahmacharis. So Ashram doesn't matter. But what matters is Vairagya, renunciation. Renunciation of false uh, proprietorship, false controllership, and false enjoyership. There is one very exalted senior devotee in uh, Chaupati Temple in India. His name is Krishnanand Prabhu. So he was traveling in a train once, and you know, he's in saffron. So some people they came up to him, "Oh, Sadhuji, you have come. You are in the train," mm. and they were uh, talking amongst themselves very loudly in front of Krishnanand Prabhu, and they were saying, "Just see, you have renounced your home." You have renounced your property, you have renounced your education, and you have renounced everything in this world. And they were saying, you know, out of pity, they were making a lot of remarks. They were feeling sorry for him. So Krishna and Prabhu remarked to them that, uh, see, I've just renounced family, I've just renounced property, I've just renounced small, small things of this world. But you are better renun uh, renunciants than me because you have renounced Krishna only. Isn't it? So you see that true. <laughs> so the true renunciation is renunciation of anything that distracts us from Krishna service. That is true renunciation, which can be practiced by all. You see, Bhakti Vikas Maharaj's there is this uh, book, Brahmach. Uh, what is that book? Brahmacharya and Krishna Consciousness. In the beginning, he says, "Whom is it meant for?" And he says, "It's meant for everyone." You've seen that because we all need it. Brahmacharya and Krishna consciousness. Whether Prabhupada called the people in Grihastha Ashram as fixed up people as uh, Grihastha Brahmacharis. Hmm? So therefore, what is important, what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu claimed important was Vairagya. Vairagya vid, uh, Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga Shikshartam Ekam Purusha Purana uh, I forget the other thing. So Sarvabham Bhattacharya is saying Lord Chaitanya, you are known for Vairagya Vidya and of course that is concluding in bhakti, devotional service, not dry vairagya of the smartha brahmanas. Hmm. So therefore we keep vairagya as important and what our Goswamis all have taught us is the yukta vairagya principle. See even in yukta vairagya we can only we can only practice yukta vairagya with those things First of all, what is Yukta Vairagya? Anyone knows? What is Yukta Vairagya? Vairagya in yoga and connection with service, connection with Krishna. That's the fish without getting Okay. Yeah, Yukta Vairagya means we don't say, you know, I reject laptop, I reject sound system, I reject uh, facilities. No, we say whatever facilities is there, let me use it in Krishna's service. That is Yukta Vairagya. You connect to Krishna. That is the type of renunciation which was propounded by our Goswamis. So we see Yukta Vairagya, the, one of the important aspects of Yukta Vairagya is 
some I've seen some devotees they say yeah yes Prabhu I can have iPhone uh, the latest model I keep updating my iPhone why because it's Yukta Vairagya yukta vai I'm using it for Krishna service ultimately I listen to bhajans you know I have uh, nice videos to see Facebook and my Facebook profile also Yukta Vairagya I only have you know I subscribe to all Hare Krishna channels you know so Yukta Vairagya that's not Yukta Vairagya by the way Yukta Vairagya means only those things which are capable of connecting. It's like say, uh, you, if, if we give you enough facilities in the temple, then if that facility is going to make you lax in devotional service, you are not able to connect it to Krishna, that's not Yukta Vairagya. So they, though Rupa Goswami and all of them, they talked about Yukta Vairagya, what were they wearing? Were they wearing golden ornaments? They lived the simplest life. Yukta Vairagya is uh, used or utilized, the principles are utilized for, for the purpose of preaching and when it is required, not unnecessarily. Therefore, for Brahmacharya is what we have, or what I'm supposed to have is button phone, generally. But for managers, sometimes they need, you know, something, you know, touch screen or whatever, WhatsApp and everything, generally. Otherwise, especially for the new Brahmacharis who join the ashram, it should be only button phone. Because, you know, previous samskaras. Right? So, so the, uh, that is one thing about Yukta Vairagya, which was propounded by uh, the Gos, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Goswamis. But the thing is, the most important aspect is Vairagya. Mahaprabhura Bhakta Ganera Vairagya Pradhan. Uh, what is the next line? Yaha Deki Preeti Hoi Gaurav Bhagavan. Wherever actually the Chaitanya how, how do you make out a uh, follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? By looking, looking at his Vairagya. Though we read, you know, Charidiha, Chira Dahi festival in, in Panihati, in the scriptures, you know, everyone is filling their throats. They are eating so much of the Dahi Chira. That is described, my special master was explaining. Sometimes the Dahi Chira would come from the nose. So much they would eat. <laughs> right? So it seems that actually there is no renunciation. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would sometimes fast out of his ecstasy of, of separation from Krishna, all the disciples would fast. How, for how many? Uh, for how long? For many, many days together. So their eating or fasting was simply dependent on what would please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, they were completely renounced. Not that, you know, because sometimes we see Bhakti Nath Thakur, they are all explaining nice delicacies and then it becomes a food-centered movement. It's not food-centered. It's prasadam centered. Prasadam because it's connection with Krishna. So Krishna is in the center. So therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers are identified by their vairagya. Hmm. Vairagya is very important. And wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would see vairagya, he would become very happy. Example? Very famous example. Wherever he would see vairagya, any symptoms of renunciation, he would become very happy. Yes, of Raghunadas Goswami. Oh, yes. Whenever he would see, whenever he would keep, get, he would keep getting news of Raghunadas Goswami, how he is doing, from Sarup Damodar. So whenever he would hear that he is increasing his austerities, initially he was getting some money from parents, but he would eat simply, and he would use that money to feed the Vaishnavas. But he still felt, I am dependent on my parents' money. So he cut it down. He stopped receiving money. Then he would uh, wait outside Anand Bazar of Jagannath Puri Temple, and beg for people but then he felt I'm like a prostitute thinking probably this person will give me some food but that person he gave me roti yesterday maybe he'll again give me roti so then he felt I don't want to do this so then he then he started eating only what he would get on his own like some people would they would dump Mahaprasad in a place for cows food. yeah that is after that yeah that is last last stage last yeah so then finally what his type of his renunciation went up to such a level that only would the Mahaprasad eaten by the cows and rejected by the cows. And the cows wouldn't eat it. He would wash it in, uh, under the tap and he would take. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got to know this, he came there, he snatched some of such prasadam and he took it. And he said, this is the most tastiest prasadam I've ever had. So what was he tasting? Is it, is it the taste? Is it the salt? Is it the uh, other thing, ingredients? What he was tasting? No, he was tasting Raghunath Das Goswami's renunciation. That was very tasty. Like uncooked rice, basically. Yeah. Washed off and cooked for it. It was just a dry, like. Yeah. And he was tasting Raghunath Das Goswami's renunciation. 
So, you see, the most important aspect of Krishna consciousness is renunciation. Of course, devotion, but without renunciation, like Prabhupada says, sense gratification and Krishna consciousness go yeah. ill together. And uh, you see, even there's, I heard Prabhupada's clip, you know, this Vani media, they make the small, small clips taken from different uh, lectures of Sri Prabhupada. It's very nice because it's very focused and they give a nice title to it. So in one of them, Prabhupada was saying, actually you see, when Chota Haridas, when he came back after begging that rice and Mahaprabhu took it, he could immediately make out the rice was received in a bad consciousness. Because when he went for begging, he had seen one, uh, that lady, he felt a little lust in the mind. He didn't act for it. So when he ate the rice, he could tell. Yeah, he could tell. So therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chastised Chota Haridas and feeling bad, Chota Haridas, of course he was kicked out of association and he committed suicide. And when the other disciple, other followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is what happened with Chota Haridas, that time what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said? Very good. Very, good. <laughs> Very heavy. Whereas on the other hand you see, so it, this aspect may show Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so harsh, he's so rude or strong, very strong hmm? against, uh, you know, getting married or anything, having wife. But whereas you see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he would go to Chivas Pandit's home, he would greet all the family members warmly. Actually he would even play with the small child of Shivas Pandit and he even named Shivas Pandit's son. Isn't it? He was very happy. So Prabhupada says, gives these two examples and then he says, so what we can understand from these two stories is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't mind about being Grihastha or Brahmachari. What he didn't like or what he hated so much was hypocrisy. If, you, if one is, belongs to Grihastha Ashrama, he is putting a garb of a sannyasi, garb of renounced order, but maintaining material desires in the mind, maintaining desires for association with opposite sex in the mind or accumulation of money. These are the two things. So if he is maintaining such desires in the garb of renounced order, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like. He, he didn't mind Brahmachi Ashram, Sanyas, Vahan Prast or uh, Grihastha Ashrama. Maybe you can, can you just take out CC 6.220? 6.220. Yeah. So there in, sorry? Hmm. Yeah. It should be uh, this Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhura Bhakta Ganera Vairagi Pradhan. It's one of them. Yes. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you go to translation? Translation? Yeah. Renunciation is a basic principle sustaining the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees. Seeing the renunciation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is extremely satisfying. Yeah. Can you go to the purport? Yeah, now Prabhupada says such nice. Whole purport you can read. Can you read Anyone, from whether an ordinary materialistic person. Mike, Mike. Anyone, whether an ordinary materialistic person or a pure devotee, can understand the behavior of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees. If he studies it minutely, one will thus find that the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are not at all attached to any kind of material enjoyment. They have completely given up sense enjoyment to engage fully in the service of Lord Sri Krishna and dedicate their lives and souls to serving Krishna without material desires. Because their devotional service is free from material desires, it is unimpeded by material circumstances. Although ordinary men have great difficulty understanding this attitude of the devotees, it is greatly appreciated by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes. So what we have to, like what is the 10th offense to chanting of the Holy Name? Do not have complete faith. And, uh, uh, despite having so many material uh, attachments. attachments. No, it's not having, it's not having. Maintaining material attachments. Right? You know what is maintaining and having? Having means we have desires but we don't want to pursue them. So having, you, even yeah, if you see, yeah, you can't help with having it. You can just chant more to purify them. That's all. But maintaining, 
What, can can someone explain what is maintaining the material desires? What do you understand? You can speak in the mic so that other people on the phone can hear. Uh, maintaining will be like we put conscious voluntary effort into that so that uh, we keep the keep our material material yeah, attachments uh, okay. intact to cause or enable to cause or enable maintain, maintain. yes enable. yes so there's a saying energy flows where the intent goes right so you see sometimes <laughs> i mean uh, radhisham pru was saying was he was giving different understanding of uh, attachment and affection, some different levels he was speaking. He said sometimes, you know, we are attached to sweets. We have, uh, no, he was saying, speaking about attachment and addiction. So attachment means we have attachment to sweets. So if someone gives sweet, you cannot resist. That's not a small attachment. But what is addiction? You go and fight for it with other <laughs> devotees. <laughs> that is addiction. Hmm. So maintaining des uh, material desires means that we are actually putting efforts to pursue the material desire, though we know it's wrong, though it's uh, contradicting our bhakti, that is uh, maintaining, maintaining material desire. So if you see this purport, you will not see anything about ashramas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is, he's not talking about, you know, he favors Brahmachi ashram, doesn't favor Guhistan, nothing like that. He doesn't ki uh, care. What he cares is that his followers have to be, try to become pure devotees. That's all. So, and our effort should be in conquering material desires. That is most important. Ashrama is secondary. Or is not even a factor. Most important is we have to become, we are, our energy and our effort should be in that direction to conquer our material desires. And then, of course, come to the point of pure devotional service. This is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted. And you see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's group, you will find sannyasis. Can you give example of sannyasis from his association? Sannyasi. Prabodhananda Saraswati, okay. Anyone else? No other? What was Sarup Damodar? He was like a Babaji. Oh, you said Sarup Damodar? Yeah, Sarup I think he was Babaji. Like he was sannyas, but he was like, you know, Ainda Prabhu. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were also, but they also like Babaji's, the Goswamis. Oh, you mean like people that took sannyas? Yeah, like sannyas association. Okay, what are, who are some of the brahmacharis in his association? Yeah, Nashinga Brahmachari. A milk drinking Brahmachari, later he became a devotee. Yeah. Even Gadadar Pandit was Brahmachari, or he was sannyas. It's like a Shetar sannyasi actually. Was sannyasi, so he comes out of sannyas category. Okay, Grastas, many, many are there. Who? Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu. Sarvam Sarva Shivananda Sen, Shivas Pandit, all these are Grastas. Prataprudra. And. Uh, Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy. He was also, yeah, he was mine. Yeah. No, his brothers, he and his brothers, five point was. So you see, basically all all the ashrama people were there, and no one put down others. No one said we are the greatest. You know, nothing like that. No uh, teasing, no fighting, no leg pulling, because what Chaitanya Prabhu cared for was that they're practicing pure devotional service. So therefore, when Prata, King Pratap Rudra, he was massaging the leg, uh, feet, lotus feet of Chaitanya Prabhu. You know, Mahaprabhu never entertained Pratapruddha in his association because of what other people will think. So then, uh, in, uh, under guidance of Ramananda Raya, Sarvamattacharya, I think, I'm not sure. Sarvamattacharya. So then he went to this uh, place where Ch Mahaprabhu was lying down. And he went, he disguised himself as a normal person, not kingly attire. And he went and he started singing Gopi Gita, which was very soothing to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then he was, uh, his heart was so touched and he asked Prataprudra, who are you? Suddenly, you know, he didn't expect this coming. See, one, uh, we are all sleeping, someone comes and immediately wakes you up and says, who are you? Immediately you'll say, you know, I am such and such, I am an engineer, I am a doctor, I am doing this, I am so... That's our identity, but what did Prataprudra say? What did Prataprudra say? Naham vipro na chanarapati, naam vaishyo na shudro. He said that. 
ना हम वर्णी न च गृहपति नो मनस्तो यतीर्वा किंतु प्रोद्यान निखिल परमानंद पूर्णा मृताब्देर गोपी बर्तो पद कमलोर दास 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 नु दास हियरिंग दिस महाप्रभु वॉज इवन मोर थ्रिल बिकॉज दैट्स वॉट मैटर्स एट द एंड ऑफ द डे सो एनी वन हैज एनी क्वेश्चन और कमेंट्स talking about yukta vairagya and then there's mukta vairagya which is the opposite meaning that like you know, when you're something you know you could have used it in Krishna service then you're like a monkey um and i heard before that like sinful activities when you know they're sinful or you could say why they're sinful is that you can't really engage them in Krishna service and then my thought on that would be like a, a asterisk like and bless like you could use them if you were extremely powerful and you can think of some like i mean some pastimes of prabhupad or some pastimes of the one of the hours um what do you have to say about that does that make sense yeah w- one thing what uh, example comes to my mind is when prabhupad saw a person who was addicted to drinking wine he said you know this thing that the taste of this wine is krishna Like of course the all the point is to grow in devotional service he cannot keep drinking wine for his whole life and keep thinking oh this is krishna this is krishna i'll continue then it becomes you know initially it's uh, like in 11th canto there's an important verse which says what is piety and what is impiety like suppose someone comes from he was never chanting before immediately he starts chanting four rounds so everyone will say hari bol and clap hands and everything suppose uh, 16 rounder he because of his lack of sadhana he tells goes to his mentor counselor and says prabhu from today i want to chant four rounds from 16 i have come down to four <laughs> no one will clap hands for him isn't it why because coming from 0 to 4 is called as piety according to this verse and for the other person coming to four is not piety it's impiety right so at different stages of life our piety impiety changes what is piety for some is actually impiety for another if you're capable of doing something and if you're doing less than that for krishna it's impiety like that but some for someone like uh, in uh, pune temple radhishyam prabhu saw one uh, western body devotee he was in ashram so every day morning he would go and take this uh, rasgullas and everything every day he would eat so then uh, he told him why are you eating and he got many complaints from other brahmacharis that this prabhu is not sense controlled so then he asked him one day that why are you eating like this it's not good for brahmacharya for your brahmacharya then he said you know proji i was uh, eating meat before so when i eat these sweets it helps me overcome my taste for eating meat so then rajan prabhu said oh, then it's fine but suppose a uh, person uh, prabhu who is born in a brahmana family he's never eaten meat so he doesn't have the strong this thing to eat uh, opulent sweets and he is eating following the example of western body devotee so if he also is then that is impiety for him then he'll fall down Are you able to understand so all this so krishna is bhavagrahi janardan like that i am just adding because you said about yeah you know, the point is it's coming to the qualification of the individual yeah. or the or their you know too much disqualification then they may get some leniency but not that that you're already qualified and you want to go down because you see someone got a exception like the exception to the rule actually underlines the rule it doesn't make negate the rule and Very you know true. everything can just be an exception Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare anything else okay uh shivan bhagavatam ki yeah shri prabhupad ki pita ek aur premand de Should Prabhupada keep? Yeah. Yeah.